Hey, this is Dr. Brian Curtis. I'm one of the paleontologists at Fossil Crates, and I'm here today with the inimitable Rick Hunter, paleontologist at the Museum of Ancient Life. Hi, Rick. Hi. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, welcome. Glad to have you. So we're in the lab, and where I'm standing right now, last November, there was a block that was nine tons and buckled the floor with floor jacks in it. I'll let you talk a little bit about that and where it went and what's here instead. Yeah, that was the Utah Raptor Project. So back about 14 years ago, down here in the town of Moab, there was a, a huge block of Utah Raptors that contained at least one adult we know about and six juveniles that we could see on the surface that, as we were preparing it down. May have been more in there. Some really exciting stuff. And it was a huge block. Take a ton of time to work on it. Uh, we, we worked for about five years and then we moved it on up to Jim Kirkland's lab at the Geological Survey, and that's where we find it now. So once that was out of the way, we moved the rest of our project that we've been working on here for a number of years, which is a Verasaurus that was discovered at Blanc Cabin Quarry by Western Paleontological Laboratories back in 1995. And so it's been an ongoing project for all of those years. Uh, well, not since 95, but as long as we've had the lab in operation here at the museum. It's fantastic. And what are we looking at here? It looks like some dorsals. So this jacket here contains six dorsals. Uh, this jacket was a lot bigger. It was about yay tall when we started. And when we took the, the top material off, it was some cervical vertebrae. We got down through that, then we hit a layer of ribs, and then once we got beyond that, then here's the dorsal vertebrae. And they're in articulation, which yeah. is so rare. Yeah, it is. And for Barasaurus, that's even cooler. I mean, that's a, it's a fairly rare and more than Yeah. And the, now, is that bone punky? Is it solid? What's it like working on this? It's, it's solid, but it's fractured really bad. It was discovered fairly near the surface, and so it has some weathering that's gone on. It seems to be quite stable, but like I say, it's very broken up. So we're in the process of doing the puzzle, mm -hmm. piecing everything back together, getting oh. it to where we can remove it. Oh, hold on, if you don't mind pulling that up, come over here and shoot into that. So you can see how these bones are not solid. When you look at a diplodocid, they have these pneumatic fossa here. And this, this, these are, it's like honeycomb inside this. So this looks solid, and you can see there the corresponding piece. All of that's full of air sacs and life. So these animals had fairly hollow bones, even though they were, you know, 70, 80 feet long and 20 tons. And now they're full of sand. <laughs> and they're extremely heavy. Yeah. Um, and then the Barasaurus has really short transverse process. So you've got the, one of the rib heads, you know, the ribs would attach here and here. And then you have this tall, neural spine. And do you have the neural spines moving forward? We don't. This is that was eroded away on that side there. This is all that we actually have. Okay. Still impressive. So we're going headward that way, tailward that way. Right. And then as I recall, you have some tails floating around here somewhere. Yeah, we've got some caudal vertebra over here. And then the cervicals go to this. This all goes to one individual? Yes. Yeah, everything in the in the lab currently is all part of the same animal. <laughs> Any skull material? No. We're actually missing the anterior portion of the neck, the anterior half, I should okay. say. And then what is this? This looks like a theropod. Camptosaurus. That's the pelvis and, and femur of Camptosaurus. Right. Okay. And it was actually found kind of nestled up next to the Verasaurus in the very same location. So this is a plant-eating dinosaur. Lived hanging out. Probably food for just about everything. Um, it would need to run away to stay alive. I guess it had little thumb spikes. It could really, in a, in a pinch, jab you, but possibly <laughs> not nothing like a guanodon later on. And this is this was all articulated. This is just how you found just it. Just how we found it. Wow. Don't have a quarry. It's one of those special places in the world. It really is. What's amazing to me too is the ossified tendons that are still preserved here. We don't see that a lot. So these tendons would have helped provide structural rigidity. They run down the tail. You see them in like Deinonychus, really, and Tenonosaurs in the Cretaceous, but you don't see them preserved. Like there's none of dry mesa, to my knowledge, that we've that we've dug out of there. Maybe some thin bone that we say don't know what it is, yeah. but it's very clear here. Sure. That's awesome. And then what's in this thing for us? Is this, yeah, is this the pelvis? That is the pelvis. The entire structure. Oh, 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 oh. And it's big. One big buck. Goodness. And do you think there's a bottle attached to this? Yes, I think so. 
that's going to, when you guys crack that open and pull out caudal one, I love looking at those first couple caudals and how they articulate with the caudal sacral region. They're so cool. It's just awesome. And then when we have some more proximal, or distal, distal cervicals or proximal dorsals? Let's see. I'm going to call it a dorsal. I'm going to call it a dorsal too. I'm thinking number three. Yeah, yeah. it's a pair of pops. You're seeing it, right? Yeah, that pops is here, pair of pops is down right there. Yeah, so that's another yeah. three. We were just talking about how those brachius or dorsals. So the ribs, the capitulum of the tuberculum, they attach, one's up here and it's a head, it's like a big C, and then the rib comes off. And that's how you define it as a dorsal, it's got an actual rib and not a cervical rib. Like you have cervical ribs on here, like this. Okay. So this is exquisite. And you can see the rib, the front of the head's right here, and then it goes back. And what's really cool with Barasaurus is it goes back, 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 back. And it keeps going. Holy cow. It ended broken off actually right there so it could have extended even and then the next one would go back and the next one so they almost they, they have an overlappage which is just incredible and you can see the honeycombing so this is the ball of a cervical vertebra here and thanks to weathering it's you want to see how pneumatic this guy is inside Shh. look at that and that is insane all of the, the dark brown is the bone and all the light is where air would have been and now sand is taking its place that is so impressive and then you had a stromatolite when we were here last time. Yeah, it's back this way. Okay. And then what's in this one? That's mostly caudals, anterior caudals. Wow. So this yeah, there may be some surprises too. We're hoping there's surprises in there. So this will bolt on the back of that one. And then if you get the whole animal. Yeah. So, and then the limb material for that as well? Yeah, we've got, a, we've got both finger, fingers. Both tibia, both fibulae. Uh, Amazing. A foot. It's back there in the collections room. Go back there and take a look. Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh, oh. This gorgeous material. So you've got cervicals, and if you come over here, they prep this one out so you can see. This in life would have been covered with, with bone, but because the outer is worn away, you can see the honeycombing. All of this high of matrixy area, or the, this, this honeycomb area was full of pneumat pneumatic sacs running all through this. These bones are extraordinarily hollow for all of their bigness. Their in life would have been fairly, you know, I don't want to say fragile, because they're bones, bone has strength, but much lighter than you would have thought they would have been, that's for sure. And then is that get that's all parts of the campus or okay. just looked at. Wow. Oh, including a foot. It's a cute little foot. Yeah. You <laughs> remember seeing the articulated foot out in the Jurassic? Yeah. Paul, oh, that's all part of the same dinosaur. Oh, this is awesome. Well thank you all. We're finding some other things that you may find of interest too if we're digging through that. We're finding oh, things wow. that don't belong to Barosaurus in no. the jacket mixed in with those bones. What is it? This crocodilian. So you can see this probably Goniophilus. So if you look at a crocodile or alligator today and you peel back the outer layer of skin, this is what the bone, the osteoderms look like. This is the outside of a crocodile. Crocodiles have been more or less unchanged for a long time. That's gorgeous. I was in that same jacket and I was cleaning some of the big dorsal vertebrae and all of a sudden popped out this little tiny oh my dorsal goodness. vertebra. We think it's Dryosaurus. May. Yes. Look at that. So is this neurocentral sutural, is this, I mean, it looks almost like it just didn't fuse completely yeah, I don't yet. Think it's fused yet. So I know in the Saurischia, that would mean juvenile for sure. Mm -hmm. But Dryosaurus wasn't the biggest of animals to begin with. Yeah. So it's amazing how that neural spine is such a little nub. And that's, so that's, that's headward pointing that way, and that's tailward. That's yeah. awesome. That is cool. The problem with this dinosaur is everything's fractured so bad. This was in 15 pieces, so oh, it took that a lot of thing? time. Yeah, it took a lot of time to reassemble it off. You can see right here it. all those. Just, but you have them all. That's the crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, I was, I was quite lucky. I was able to put it all back together. I mean, that's awesome. the ultimate crossbow or the ultimate puzzle. Yes. Forget wood wood puzzles like this, all the rage. You got real bone puzzles. Yeah. Huh? I don't know if I showed you this last time, but we have the very end of the tail <gasps> along with the button. The button. Which is a vertebra, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Who would ever think if it wasn't wouldn't have been articulated? That oh, that's what yeah, that was. I'm sure. Is this at is, the very end or something? Yeah, this yeah. is the tip of the. So, we talked about the whiplash tail earlier mm -hmm. today, and then it just goes down to nothing. <laughs> it just ends. Wow. Ferrosaurus has also these ventral sulcus, so I don't want to break. Yeah, I'm already talking about. Yeah, but you can see mm -hmm. it's wide and sh much shallower than Diplodocus, but these are pretty deep as far as barrels go. Um, I, I used to take a ruler and then drop a plumb bob and measure on all of them to get maximum ventral, maximum depth, and they usually are never more than three centimeters. But this one certainly looks like it's deeper than three centimeters. This is more like what I'm used to. Yeah. So was the plan to describe and publish this? Eventually, yes. Here's the more whiplash tail here. So these are some very robust. So these would have all gone in a line. It would have been a like chain of bone. And the further back you see, they get the, the neural spines get tinier and tinier until they disappear. And you have this long rod of bone, this chain of bone. That would be 15, 20 of them just in a row. And you often find them, like the Carnegie's got a couple of these tails articulated with brakes and reheels on them because it was clearly hitting something. Mm. But just gorgeous material. Nice ribs as well. Wow. What are we looking at here? That's Sefactinus. Okay. That's, just That's the other side of the skull on the one that we have out on the exhibit. You can see that we just have the right side sitting there. So this is the left that side. That is just a mean looking fish. Yeah. Yeah. It sure is. And it's, I didn't appreciate. I mean, I always loved the stomach contact and the one that swallowed the gillet fist. So, yeah. But to see the stuff that Treble's got, these 15, 16, 19, 20 footers. It's crazy, isn't it? As a bony fish, the largest bony yeah. fish today, the yeah. Mola Mola, uh, and it goes a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess a you know, predatory fish, the largest one would be something like the Russian Taimen, those those big trout-like things. Uh, I'm excluding tuna because tuna are predatory, but they're not as cool looking. Yeah. A tarpon, big tarpon doesn't go. Oh, yeah. 200 pounds tops maybe? Oh my goodness. Well Rick, this is fantastic. Now what area do you like to play in? What is your, I mean, you're going to the Green River for six weeks. Green River formation is my first love, of course, but I'm still Jurassic dinosaurs. What's the, like I saw your Hieracotherium, or I don't know if they're still calling that, that, yeah, the horse name. Proto-Orohippus is what it's called now. Thank you. I knew yeah. it had a different name, but. Yeah. Proto Orohippus. Yes. All right then. And that was the first one found by Jimmy Tinsky. There's been a second one found several years ago by Brock and a couple people at American Fossil. So if you ask Brock about that, he can show you his original specimen. Super rare. And it's beautiful. That's going to be awesome. And what is your favorite, you know, when you look back at your Green River days, do you have a favorite, not necessarily the rarest, but like a favorite specimen that you've uncovered? Favorite? Uh, I really like the big Ferriotis because they have such a mouthful of teeth and they're just predatory, mean good, good. looking fish. I've been fortunate to find some really nice ones. And they're like almost 30 inches long. Oh my God. I remember Charlie McClellan prepping a Ferriotis and I just couldn't believe how mm. vicious because he was so careful up in that area. I was yeah. like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. Yeah. And what about something ultra rare or, or just something that you normally don't see in the Green River? Uh, I didn't find this specimen, but it was two years ago, right while I was there working, uh, one of the guys in one of the layers up above found a, a tapir. What? That had drifted out into the lake and sank in the sediments and it turned out that it was new. Oh my New goodness. to science. Did it have, was it as well preserved? No, as? no, it was a little more fragmentary. There was a lot of material missing, but enough Still. there that they were able to, to get a description on it. Just the fact that tapers were even wandering around Wyoming yeah, is yeah, mind-blowing in and of itself. That tells you the difference in climate and changes in the world. It does. Wow. Well, this has been unbelievably awesome and cool, and it's always a pleasure hanging out with you. So. I'm happy to have you guys here. Christy, any comments? Hey, I don't know, anything else you want to, you want to particularly comment on or give a plug to? Or? Oh, come and see us. Yeah, that's, yeah. Definitely come and see us. We'll show yeah. you a good time and a lot of really nice specimens to look at.